Money, Atmos and Wokeism, three topics that have seemed to come out as a result of the announcement of the 50 year anniversary of Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, which was announced in recent times that was coming out on the 23rd of March. We'll be covering that particular album, but this been a little bit unusual as there's been probably a number of things that have been spoken about in the press about this upcoming edition, which um, doesn't usually happen. But in terms of what has been announced just just from a product perspective is a I guess a, a multi-vinyl multi-format edition of Dark Side of the Moon remixed with live versions um, versions in Atmos 5.1 it's going to cost somewhere between probably 300 or 500 Australian dollars so um, I can do a conversion about what that means in the US but it's not going to be something that uh, yeah you're going to have to make a decision to throw your your money at obviously so I, I guess for me probably the, the first thing to talk about is this is just going to come out um, probably 11 years after the immersion mix where there has was I guess a, another update to, to previous releases Al I'm just sort of wondering where is this all going to stop mate yeah it's interesting that um, bands are, uh, within the digital age are re-releasing these albums in such a uh, such a huge way and a catalogue of materials that will keep people busy and I know there's plenty of fans out there who will really enjoy this and might have the spare change to do that but here at Indie Miners we really need you to uh, click that like button subscribe because uh, it's going to take us about 538 years until we could afford that particular release I mean it's Pink Floyd mate I'm always excited about what they're going to release but this is a uh, an interesting release and I do question why they're doing it in terms of the money it would be nice if they decided to donate say 50 percent of the profits they are in the top 15 richest bands of all time mates now in terms of the the wokeism that's kind of going around that you mentioned before i mean that that's just hilarious isn't it for those who don't know what i'm talking about uh the news got wind that uh, pink floyd were releasing this and of course with the album with the rainbow uh on it and it's copped criticism and many comments from people possibly a, a lot younger who weren't around at the time. BJ, you were around at the time. You were uh, 10 or 12 years old at the time, I believe. So you do the math, you're not 62. But really, I mean, when does it all end for me, really? The album's called Dark Side of the Moon. You can't say the word dark anymore because you might reference someone's skin color and you can't say the word moon because you might be uh, assuming that the moon still wants to identify as a moon. Mate, I'll give this a listen. I'm looking forward to it. Bring it on March. I'd be interested in what you've got to say about this release from the lads at Pink Floyd. Yeah, I, I, there's a couple of things. I think that um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Atmos mix. However, there's already been a 5.1 version of this particular album. So it'll, it'll be interesting to know if it actually adds anything to the experience. If you've listened to the 5.1, it is probably one of the better 5.1 releases that are kicking about but you know ha is it necessary for for the change of atmos well, look it might might be but i i'm just i'm just not sure i'm just not sure and uh, look i think the other thing is just just in terms of these constant releases by bands every 10 years i, I can see the argument for it is something hasn't been updated for 30 40 50 years but we are seeing constant updates to these albums almost every 10 years there was a an update to dark side of the moon in the the mid 90s which was seen to be a, a step forward we had the immersion mix of 2011 which was also another step more forward I, i'm just sort of getting a sense that yeah are there going to be diminishing returns with these types of things moving forward have we have we heard enough and look i almost feel as you know what's left is for these bands to actually just release the the individual tracks which would be i think would be actually interesting because it would allow you to get really deep into certain tracks you know especially things that might be hidden to the mix but i'm, I'm not sure of what what else is there and look in terms of the wokeism stuff it, it is <laughs> very interesting i mean we we threw that in but i mean this is i mean pig floyd um, i mean pig floyd really is for everyone but if they are representing something they have represented um, views it is more on the, the the left of things so and you know they just happen to have a rainbow on their cover so look I, I just 
maybe there is a, a, a sense of sort of opportunism to, to put that into the logo, but I, I think they're well within their right. I mean, it's not as if it, it didn't exist and they decided to put it in for whatever reason. Right. It's okay if they, they did, by the way, but I, I just really think it's, uh, it's people getting upset about things for the sake of getting upset about things, which I think, I think people have just got to calm the farm, to be quite honest. Can't say farm anymore, mate. Not allowed to say farm. All right, so that that's our preview for today around Dark Side of the Moon. We're going to come up with a, a nutty, another mini episode around brain damage, which was released. Um, uh, yeah, you can't say sort of, brain damage anymore, mate. Not allowed to say that as well. Okay, well, like, let me uh, just uh, leave it there, and we'll see you next time. That wraps up another episode of Indie Miners. Please look to subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, and let us know if there's an album you would like us to look at. So until next time, bye for now, and thank you for watching.